everyone. Let's do this problem here where we use the squeeze theorem to show that a limit is equal to zero. And what we're going to do is uh, access our memory and our experience so that we can build on problems that we've already seen that have the squeeze theorem. And so one of the things we've seen on previous problems with the squeeze theorem is when you had sign that we saw an inequality used for sign. Sign is at most one and at least negative one. Now, when we use the squeeze theorem, we do need to have an inequality. And what we're going to do with our inequality is to have this function, which, you know, which is not something that's easy to get a handle on. We need an inequality where that function I just highlighted in green is in the middle. Now, so far, I only have sine in the middle between negative one and one, and I'm going to build on that. And it, this, this inequality is true regardless of what the input is for sine. Here we have pi over x as an input. So, you know, of course, x can't equal zero. We're not allowed to divide by zero with that pi over x part. So then what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, use the fact If A is less than or equal to B, then E to the A is less than or equal to E to the B. And why would that be true? Well, it's true because the exponential function E to the X is an increasing function. And I'm hoping you remember what that graph looks like for, for E to the X. It's, you know, here's the exponential graph and, um, or the graph of the exponential function. And uh, I say you have, if you have two values here, here's A and here's B, then because the exponential function is increasing, if, if, if the X value, the input has this inequality, A less than B, then that's true for the output for the Y value. So do you see? What I'm getting at here, my picture, or maybe that's more complicated than what we're doing anyway. So, um, I mean, it's, this is this statement is not true for all functions. The function, should, I, I, I would have to be increasing for this to be true. So that e to the a and e to the b there. So if you put in a and b, a is less than or equal to b, then e to the a is less than e to the b. Oh, well, that's true. This, this problem is a little bit more difficult than some other ones, but kind of have some fun. Okay, so therefore, e to the negative one is less than or equal to e to the sine pi x, pi over x, is less than or equal to e to the one. Then, I'm almost have that that inside that function that, that, that I've highlighted in green. I'm just going to next multiply by radical x. Radical x is never negative, so it will not reverse the uh, direction of the inequality. So I have e to the minus one, which is just a cop constant, times radical x is less or less than or equal to radical x e to the sine pi over x. So again, we don't have to reverse the direction of the inequality because radical x is never negative. So now we have that same function that we're trying to find the limit. And now we work on these outside functions. Limit as x approaches zero from the right, e to the minus one squared of x. They say x approaches zero from the right because we cannot put in negative values for uh, square root. Okay. E to the minus one is just one over E and E is between two and three. So that's around 2.7. So this is going to be E to the minus one square root of zero, which is just zero. Multiply by zero, you get zero. And then we get limit X approaches zero from the right of E radical X and just plug in Zero. And this is using the limit laws and, and the fact that we can use direct substitution when we have radicals. So I get zero. So, fortunately, 
kind of create space here. So, um, okay, what did I, what did I do? I have this inequality and this is like a sandwich. Some people call the squeeze theorem, the sandwich theorem. And the, the outside parts are like the bread of the sandwich. And the inside part would be, if it's a vegan sandwich, guacamole, hummus, maybe you know vegetables or something. But we show that the outside parts have that limit and they're both equal to zero. So we see that limit x approaches zero from the right of e to the minus one radical x, that's the first outside function on the far left, is equal to limit x approaches zero, e radical x, and they're both equal to zero. Therefore, the limit of the inside part, the part that's been sandwiched between those other functions is equal to zero by the squeeze theorem or by the sandwich theorem, whichever, whichever name you wanna use. By the squeeze theorem, AKA also known as the sandwich theorem. One of the great inventions of all time, discoveries or invention, discoveries of all time was the sandwich. Hmm, okay. So, uh, or that's just an opinion. Maybe it's sort of a little joke. But... Okay, so let's see. Uh, no jokes maybe, but let's get serious about this. Let's see what's going on here. Um, it's an involved squeeze theorem problem. It's building on uh, an easier squeeze theorem problem that you can find in books where they, that involves sign. So sine pi over x is bounded between negative one and one. From there, we build to this inequality that has three parts to it, or three functions, two inequality symbols. And then you find the limits of the outside functions. You see they're both the same. They're both equal to zero. Therefore, that middle function is has that same limit. Okay, let's end the video then. <laughs>